Hey there, Internet. Welcome to the Hard On Gear channel, where I discuss and review my used and abused knives and gear so that you know what is or isn't worth spending your hard-earned money on. I just want to do a rundown of these new EDC selections. Why I picked them, what I picked them for. We've got the Manix 2 from Spyderco, the Eskizula 2 from SE Knives, and Leatherman Squirt PS4. The Squirt I'll touch on really quick just to say that I haven't used this a ton yet for a lot of stuff. Although I have used the pliers for quite a few tasks, as I've always found I've been in that situation where I've had knives, but I really wish I could have had a set of pliers on me. So this is filling that purpose so far, the few times I've needed it. I could have got a small Swiss Army knife or something, but I really wanted something with that plier feature. Also, the other thing I've used uh, more than probably anything else on this so far has been the file for just the odd thing I've tried. Failed at some things that uh, didn't. this file couldn't quite handle. Filing off whether it's my nails or some raspy piece of wood or uh, steel barb or something like that. The knife has not been used yet just because I've got better knives on me than this and I just figure I'll keep it razor sharp. Just if that situation were to ever arise that I had used this quite hard or this and I've got no super sharp paper slice worthy knives on me, at least I'll have something sharp and slicey on me. Not that this will stay sharp for super long, but it's there if I need it. The scissors have gotten more use than anything on this. The pliers probably come close, but the scissors on this are pretty handy. They work really well. I'm curious to see how long this little spring will hold up. It seems like it's quite well built, and I believe for the price of $40, that feels like it's good enough quality to justify the purchase. So if it lasts for a couple years, great. I know a few people who've had some kicking around for a while that look pretty worn down. I've got high hopes, and we'll see if that lives up. Super cool little tool for the size of it. Fits in my coin pocket if I want to put it there, but I normally have it in my front pocket of my jeans or my back pocket of my work pants. Very common, small keychain size multi-tool. I don't like big bulky keychains, so I'll probably keep pocketing this, but that's been awesome. There may be a point where I buy another one of these just to really see how much you can get away with using this for. Obviously, this is not, this is not a Leatherman Surge or a Super Tool or anything. This is not meant to be a beat the crap out of it and expect it to hold up sort of a uh, multi-tool. Aha! I knew I left these up here for a reason. Other than, of course, if you want to follow that or send any cool pictures, videos, or new EDC selections or anything like that along and have them shared on the channel. But this is the uh, the reason I left these up was because I actually cut that with the scissors from the Leatherman Squirt. I'll make sure to post a link for each of these knives as their individual reviews get posted, but for now I'll just say really quickly there is, if you want the entire rundown of this tool, You've got the knife, all of these opening on the outside, by the way. File on the opposite side of the knife. That's that one side with the key ring. And then on the other side, you've got your flathead standard screwdriver with a bottle opener. Phillips head screwdriver with this, uh, I guess, yeah, can openers slash bottle openers on each of these. Opposite side of those, you've got your scissors. And then inside these beautiful spring-loaded pliers. You can see this is still not super broken in yet, like it's got quite a bit of heft to open and close it. I'm sure that'll keep smoothing out, smoothening out over time, and I could lube it up a bit or something, but that's something that'll work itself out. Still very comfortable to use, and actually I really like the snap that it has to. It makes it feel like it's yeah, good quality. Moving on to the SE Azula 2. This is the fixed blade I chose over basically every fixed blade that you could find out on the internet these days. I wanted something in that perfect area of compactness, versatility, toughness. Now keep in mind when I'm talking about toughness, I'm not talking about average person toughness. I mean, I need something that's gonna hold up to the idiotic stuff that I do with my gear. And while this Manix is awesome and super tough, I need something that's more or less bulletproof. And this. Azula damn near fits that. The other thing I guess is I need this knife to be able to serve all those purposes simultaneously and in any situation if let's say I were in a dire situation where I only had one knife this thing needs to fit all those purposes. In order to completely do that I had to file off the top edge here just to reveal that carbon steel as per you've seen on probably on multiple mod videos for this knife and then I taped the fire steel that comes with the SE Azula kit just onto the sheath here. So that gives me quick access. 
well, not necessarily quick access, as it's taped pretty securely on there, but it's going to stay hopefully pretty preserved. I don't believe the adhesive is going to do any damage. I could just scrape that off, unless there's some crazy thing I don't know about it, but the idea is, in an emergency situation, if I had this knife, I could get fire, I could do a lot of shelter work with this. It's not the best, it's not the beefiest, the blade could be longer, but at the same time, very quick and easy to pull in and out of that sheath and it's going to serve, I think, all of those purposes. I've used it for some woods work, but it's had, it's still got to go through a lot more testing. The only thing that could be better, if it was stainless, awesome, but if it was stainless, it wouldn't be high carbon, and it wouldn't serve all those other needs of toughness and versatility and such, so you're trading stuff off, but that's pretty much the saying is a fixed blade does everything well that a folding knife doesn't, and a folding knife does all the things that a fixed blade doesn't. So a fixed blade, very rugged, hard use, typically full tang. You could get away with whipping this at trees, which you shouldn't, but most of us probably do. But essentially you know that unless you're really breaking the boundaries of what a person should ever use a knife for, you're gonna have a hard time breaking this. And SE has got a really cool warranty. Zach from Blade HQ said once, you could cut this thing in half with a lightsaber, or at least you could tell them that. And they're going to take your word for it and send you a brand new SE Azula 2 in the mail. That's really unfortunate about your lightsaber incident, but we should have built our knives better. Here you go. So pretty awesome warranty, and that's the kind of company I'd like to support. They also do a lot of real world, world testing, doing all their uh, survival and high angle rescue and a bunch of crazy stuff. The other reason I picked it is for its defensive capabilities against wild animals because in Canada we're not defending ourselves against people because that's not what knives are for. These are tools, not weapons especially in Canada, we cannot do that. Clear? Cool. So if I were attacked by a coyote in the woods, in the street, wherever, this knife is very accessible. I ha You can mount it just about anywhere, but I have it mounted appendix carry. The handle tends to drop a little bit, which some people don't like, and they tend to modify their sheaths or get an Artemis sheath or something. But I don't mind it because it makes the handle extremely accessible. You've got to watch that it's not projecting a little bit or uh, printing out of your shirt because it can pop a little bit or pop out the bottom. Not a big deal because in Canada the thing is you're not supposed to conceal knives because it shows maybe an ill intent to harm or something like that. So if it's protruding a little bit and the handle showing it shows that I'm not really attempting to conceal it. But I also don't really want people looking down especially right in my area where they could see a handle sticking out which they their eyes might get drawn to to say oh what's that poking out down there which you know <laughs> it's the knife but I don't necessarily need that unwanted attention drawn to my knife or to myself for any reason whatsoever. So I do try and make sure that I'm wearing something that's long enough that it's going to droop over that. Otherwise, I don't have it right here, but I did shave another one of these sheaths. So without the belt clip, I just shaved off where the uh, rivet, the screw holes and rivet holes, whatever, are right here. It just slips in my pocket very easy. I've got a lanyard loop attached to it so I can just slip it in. The only big downside to having that lanyard looped with the smaller sheath without the belt clip and sitting in my back pocket is that it's not able to be drawn from both hands, either hand, if I needed to. If for whatever reason my left hand is tied up or disabled and I can't, then I can still reverse draw with my right hand. And then if I have to switch around, my dexterity sucks with my right hand. But if I had to switch it around, I could still draw it and get to it. Or of course, just go right to work for whatever slicing or utility tool task I'm using this for. No problem. The nice thing about having a shorter blade, which has its disadvantages because a longer blade, you can get a lot more work and a lot more penetration or whatever you're trying to get. And the downside, the upside rather, is that you can draw this very quickly and without much range of motion. So if you were tied up and some something, a coyote or a bear had jammed up and you couldn't draw this very easily, all you've got to do is really get your hand here and just a little shift of the hips and you can get this thing out into action. That's the Azula 2. Awesome so far. I think it's going to hold up. The reviews are just too consistently good for this knife for it not to have been awesome, unless it's not your thing. But for anyone who enjoys this kind of a knife or can find utility for this size and type of fixed blade, it's perfect. And lastly, if you did want something a little smaller or a little more concealable for whatever reason, to take the scales off. This becomes a slightly longer SE Azula 1. Or you could just get the SE Azula one, which is the same exact sheet knife with the same exact sheath, same exact kit for the sheath. Just imagine that bottom lanyard hole not there and a little bit, well, basically where this bottom screw is. And that's the SE Azula one, just a little shorter. So if you've got smaller hands, mine are about large, big mediums, small larges, 
I can get full grip and have a little bit of room left. So if you have large hands, you could probably still get a full grip on this knife. If you've got medium hands, you could probably get away with the SE Azula one and be probably just as comfortable with a little bit less bulk and knife to carry around if that's a concern of yours. Moving those aside, let's look at this Manix 2, which is so great. And I looked at a lot of Spydercos, looked at a lot of other knives too, but I pretty much figured my EDC folder was going to be a Spyderco. I'd never tried them, thought they looked stupid, looked past them for more tactical stuff like Cold Steel, and well, I ended up getting the Manix 2 because of all the Spydercos, this seems to be the most hard-use knife that is also fully ambidextrous. I can get by with a non-fully ambidextrous knife, but if I'm picking a EDC everything knife that's going to serve all of my needs and purposes, it really should be ambidextrous so that I can manipulate the locking system and the deployment with both hands, no issue. I did have to do a little bit of practice and just put the reps in with my right hand just because at first I couldn't even, you know, it would drop a little bit out of my hand or it would have if I wouldn't have really focused on adjusting my grip. But after a while, you can get the uh, muscle memory built up to, you know, pretty much make it work the same as your left hand or right hand depending on your actual handedness. The Manix 2 is the standard version here at least is S30V spear point style blade which is much more preferable to me over the paramilitary 2 clip point style blade. I've got clip point knives but when I chose my Recon 1 you can get that in almost any type of uh, blade style. Well uh, clip point, tanto, spear point, Maybe that's it. I think just those three, but I could be wrong. Anyways, the spear point is definitely more my preference. I find it a lot more, it is more utilitarian. You can get more done with that than a clip point blade. I think, am I mistaken on that? As I handle this right now, this is so comfortable and this really feels like it's a part of my hand with the amount that I've used this over the years. And as comfortable as this is, after I put that Manix 2 in my hand and I feel like, especially with that choil on the front, the jimping on the back, which I sound like a tool when I say that because everyone says the same stuff about the Manix. It is a jimp machine. This come out of the jimping factory and it just bounced off all the walls on the way out and came out so comfortable and so grippy. When I do my full review, I'll ramble on about all the same stuff that everyone talks about with the Manix and then some of the more specific hard on gear type abuse that I feel like I'll be putting this knife through, which is what's going to make this a little more unique of a knife for me than most people who might not put this to its full test. But I will, as I did with the Recon 1, I'll find its limitations eventually and I will see what this knife can do. But very versatile, like I say it can be deployed multiple ways with both hands. You got your spidey, I can't spidey drop with my right hand apparently. I think that's the first time I've ever tried, funny enough. But you've got your basic thumb deployment, your spider flick, your spidey drop, which if you're jumping right into like fine work or something, there is actually practicality to that if you wanted to get into like some chopping food processing. Other than that, like a spidey drop doesn't really put your hand in a good position and it, yeah, it's not very effective. You could, this isn't broken in super well yet, but yeah, you can do a little bit of a reverse flick on there if you were reverse drawing this and had to deploy it or if you're just like me and like doing for fun just to build your dexterity. But a great knife that I am loving very much. I did have the black uh, black deep carry, just a knockoff clip. I caught it on a door frame walking around a corner and bent it in a form that it still works, but it's open enough that it, I don't trust it in my pocket. So I threw the satin spider co clip back on, but I want something black because that just shines and it shows way too much out at the front of the pocket. It looks way better with that clip on it. It just screams, look at me, look what I'm carrying. And that's not really my thing. I don't want people to be just eyes drawn to my knives because then you're just asking for trouble especially if it's an enforcement officer looking around and saying oh look at that guy and his shiny knives on him what's he doing this is a work knife spider co built this as a work knife and this serves those purposes excellently and i think like i cut myself off earlier when you are fully choked up on this knife in those forward choil and jumping positions it is the most comfortable thing in the world and this is built for work it's built for utility it's built for function i can't wait to give this a more thorough hard tested review over time New EDC, fantastic, super cool, super happy with my choices. Spent better part of two or three months kind of going over my favorite knife channels and seeing what they had to say about each of these knives and finding that almost all of them agreed. Super, super, super awesome. Super, super, super awesome. And even some of the like folding knife guys who aren't big into fixed blades 
will admit this is probably one of the better choices you could get for an EDC fixed blade, and this is super, super awesome. Hard on gear approved, we'll find out for sure over time, but I really feel like the fact that I chose these based on the idea that I'm going to abuse and beat the crap out of them and that I'm going to be harder on my gear than most people, I've got very good hopes for these pieces of gear. Recon One, you've done me well, and it feels weird not to have you in my pocket and to see you anywhere else but at my left side, but it's time. The blade play, whether that's from my assembly and re-disassembly mistakes, whether it's from the Aus 8 finally getting enough wear and tear around the pivot and the triad lock that it's wore down, but I don't think so, but that's maybe, right? Well, either way, it's been a great knife, it's held up. I'd still trust this knife with my life, and I feel like it's going to be something I'll buy a newer version of, probably the S35 VN. Yeah, so keep an eye out for a new Recon 1 in my life at some point here in the future. But for now, this has been retired, replaced by Spyderco's Manix 2, an S30V with G10 handles, the Leatherman Squirt PS4, which there are a couple other versions of this with, I believe, a scissor version and an electrical wire stripper version. So this Leatherman Squirt PS4 was the one I needed because it's got pliers. And then the SE Azula number two from SE Knives. That's it for this one. Keep an eye out for my videos where I go into exactly why I picked this folding knife and the process of picking my perfect hard-on gear folding knife EDC, as well as why I picked this Leatherman Squirt and the SE Azula 2, which I will go into full detail as why I picked this out of all the fixed blades I looked at. And there were some close competitors for this, but I did end up with this. Keep an eye out for those individual videos. I'll also do a video talking about my entire EDC carry, which is a little bit more than this. Not much, but what I carry if I'm just out in jeans and a t-shirt versus what I carry on me at work and I'm wearing my uh, 511 strike pants where I've got all those extra pockets to stick stuff in. So keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching this, and we'll see you next time. This is Hard on Gear Channel, signing off.